Hi, everybody. I had a uh, presentation ready with slides and everything, but I'm going to scrap it if you don't mind. Some new developments have happened in my life. A week ago today, we sold our agency for over eight figures, significant number, and kind of changed our whole life. And so I'm going to skip from the prepared remarks, if you don't mind, and, and share with you some things I've learned along this journey. In 2008, I left law enforcement with an idea that I could maybe sell insurance over the phone and talk to more people than driving around doing final expense leads, which is what I was doing before. I had two conversations with two guys that changed my life. Both were one hour conversations. One was a gentleman named Frank Stasny, who lived in Missouri, who told me that you can sell Medicare insurance over the phone. Frank said, if you want to be good at it, you have to dial really slow on a rotary phone so that you won't give up that lead, even though you're cold call prospecting. The next influence in my life was a gentleman named Richard Cantu, who later sold his agency to a big corporation. Richard taught me the value of having a team, not being a solopreneur. And that stuck with me all through the years. Again, Richard and I had one conversation in 2008. From there, I started hiring people, and I just noticed with our payroll, we've gone through 55 different people, and we have a team now of 16. And so, yes, we had a lot of false starts, and we had no idea what we were doing. There was no training class on how to start an insurance agency when you're selling over the phone using headsets in 2008, 2009. This was 10 years before anyone heard of the word Zoom. This is way pre-pandemic. So I just want to share with you a couple of things that I've learned along the way that made my journey easier than most. And what I continue to see other agents struggle with, as this might be my last speaking engagement ever in our industry, who knows? I just want to leave you with some of the tips that have over the years inspired just a few agents. Many of you have come up to see me already this week and I really appreciate it. But I've documented our entire journey since 2009 on my website. All the ups, all the downs, all the things that we've learned. But what I discovered was I could either continue talking to cold leads or warm leads, hot leads, whatever you call it. If they don't come to you as the expert, they're all the same. They have no idea who you are, and you have the burden of proof to prove that they can trust you. So I could either be 50 years old, like I am now, and retired, doing the same thing, talking to prospects that have no idea who I am. Or I could create a system that worked, and it's all by the grace of God. I lucked into all this, folks, all of it. But I'm just going to tell you the way our journey happened. So I started putting out content, just answering questions that people have. I would hear the same question about 10 or 20 or 50 times. I would put something out about it, an article, a post, a video. It sounds profound, but if you ever want to get off the rat wheel of constantly talking to strangers, you're never really considered to be the expert in their mind, and I know this from tens of thousands of conversations, until they are seeking you out. Because you don't say that you're an expert or a doctor or a guru or a magician or whatever you want to call yourself. Your clients prove that by seeking you out. And so we've had the fortunate position of having people call us every day and saying, can I get on your calendar? And that's what changed our life. And yes, I fell into it completely by accident. If you want to believe that, I don't. So over the years, we started creating other online assets. And this is what I was going to have in this other presentation. Um, my suggestion to you is, is to make things, well, you know that interne the internet is great. Everybody's on there, wonderful. But how you do anything is how you'll do everything. If your entire business agency model is 15 years into repeating the first year over and over and over again, and by that I mean, you have no library of content by which people can consider you an expert, then you're again reliving that first year and you will never achieve the greatness, that, the impact that you want to have. And I want to talk about the impact at the end because I hear mostly from family members 
Why do you need tens of millions of dollars? Why do you need more cars? Why do you need it? Well, we only have one house. Why do you need these things? So I'll share with you my reason why. But what I've decided to do over the years, and this was completely, again, purely by accident, was documenting what their questions were, creating a smooth transition from them to go from they don't know me, they're interested in the, in the topic, they're in the market for the topic, they find me along with other people, and by the way, four of the top six people on YouTube are agents that work with me since five or six years ago, and that's pretty awesome because they've just replicated the model of giving. You can't fake having, I don't know, 4,000 hours on YouTube with just talking into a camera with one cut and being fake. You can't script that out, you can't have a teleprompter, you have to really speak from the heart. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna divide people. And, you, and some people might say, well, you don't wanna offend anyone. No, I don't wanna offend people, but I am pretty good at it. What I've done though is I've split the audience into the people who will never ever do business with me and the people who, and by the way, I need .000001% of 50 million people and I'm good for life. Some people will recognize that they will identify with you. I've got a face for radio. I know it. I own it. But there's something about my presence online that just tells it like it is. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, don't be lukewarm. You can be hot or cold, fine, but don't be lukewarm. Don't try to please everybody. The other one is not in the Bible, but I like it. The riches are in the niches. If you take a position on something, no matter what it is, if you're passionate about it, if you're honest about it, and you're sharing what you really believe is the best thing for people, and you put it out there, people will respond. And ironically, the people who are the haters are mostly agents, but the people who hate your content, don't agree with it, they'll comment on it. And guess what the social media platforms do when they comment on it? It helps the algorithm to know that this is something controversial and more people should see it. So that's a good thing. So don't hide your candle under a bushel. If you're the best Medicare expert known to man and no one knows about it, you're never gonna get anywhere in this industry. By the same token, here's my offending people again, if you want to be a solopreneur at the age of 65 and 70 and you're still doing your one-man show, that is awesome for you and there's, there's a different thing for everybody. All I know is when we started doing this content model here, we could not keep up with it. We could not write all the applications. It was very, very frustrating. It sounds idiotic to know that you're doing 13 or 15 applications a day and you're exhausted and you don't wanna explain plan F and plan G again, again, and again. So I said, I can't do it anymore. I said, honey, we gotta hire some people. Oh, we don't have money to hire people. No, we have to hire some people. Uh, we had some amazing speakers at our, our conference that we did in, in Charleston recently and the consistent theme from the smallest to the largest call center in America was you have to hire people before you think that you need to hire people. It is a step of faith. Being an entrepreneur, getting your insurance license is a step of faith. If you're gonna go in, go all in. Are you gonna hire some crumb bums that you don't get along with? Yes. Are you gonna have people that work with you that steal from you? Yes. That try to do things behind your back and deceive you? Yes. All you can do is pray for the guidance to know the good people from the bad people sooner rather than later. And that's taking the lumps of an entre entrepreneur. So I just wanna encourage you, if you're going to do something in your business so that you can be bigger than what you could do by yourself, hire people. Fail fast, do it, try it. The best advice that I continually don't listen to is hire slow and fire fast. I have too much of a heart for people. I know it's hard to understand that, but. I really do, and I don't want anyone that I've hired, that I've invested in, to fail. So we have tried to create positions internally to put people where they belong so that we can keep them because they're a good person, but maybe not a technical fit for that one role. The good thing about having a bigger team is we have more positions that they can fill. So that's all been a good thing. It's been an amazing learning process. Uh, here's another problem that I see a lot of agents that have. They're working really, really hard I had a friend that lived in Missouri. He had an amazing agency. He was a one-man operator, 
and he insisted on seeing every single client of his face to face every AEP. And it ran his health down really bad. And he's one of many that I know that. And they're in their 50s and they were taken way too soon because they didn't take time for their own health. And I, by health, I also mean mental sanity. And I can't tell you the level of stress, first of all, from selling our company last week, that's amazing. But prior to that, just having others in the office that I was not alone. Have you ever had that feeling where you're getting bashed in by rejection over and over again, and you're just feeling like the world is against you, nothing's gonna work, nothing's gonna work. Well, replace that with being in an office with, well, it doesn't hurt that four, the 13 of them are women, but I have an office of these amazing women who build each other up. When somebody's having a really bad day, the other one will say, I got you, it's gonna be better on the next call, you got this, you're gonna be fine. And so when you're not all alone and you're not unequally yoked by having all the burden on you, you can share that with somebody else. It will reduce your stress. I know hiring people sounds like a big problem, but it's really not when you can share the stress and you can be in two places at one time. Then by, if you're doing it over the phone, you can be in 10 different places at the same time by having people working with you. Here's one of my list of tips. I'll just give you a few of them. Question everything. There's nothing wrong with this. I don't want to offend anybody in this room, but it wasn't my model. Going door to door, one person supporting my entire family. If I got sick, if I'm out of it, my family is not doing too well. Going door to door, doing one pitch, one introduction at a time, at a time, at a time. I discovered as for me and my agency, I could be way more highly effective if I could first put out assets online that they would eventually find or better, and this is if no one knew me whatsoever. I'm engaging a prospect for the very first time over the phone and I say, that's a really good question. Let me send you to a resource where you can not only hear me explain it, but you can see it in real time and you can pause it and go back. Does that make sense? And they love that. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of how I've used that over the years. And you can see my, about 50% uh, quality of the websites I'm gonna to give to you, but we've used them for years and years and years. I don't think that if you're doing video or anything else, you have to be highly polished. To the contrary, the thing that's going on in television nowadays is reality TV. People want to know that the person they're dealing with has an opinion first and they have faults and they're just a normal person. The person who does not get the traction and my viewing of what other agents are doing is the person who has the perfect teleprompter, the perfect script, the suit, the tie, uh, a fancy background, and they're perfectly polished. I would argue that you should screw up every once in a while. Let them see that you're a vulnerable, real person. I can't tell you the number of people that call in, and if you look at our Google reviews online, you'll see it. They're like, he's just a real guy. They can relate to that. You don't have to be perfect, and to the contrary, I think it would actually hurt you if you're doing stuff online. Okay, I'll get back to this, and I'm not gonna keep you the whole time, so lunch is coming, I promise. Use a calendar program versus hunting for free space on your calendar, especially if you have a team. We use Calendly, but now there are a whole bunch of competitors to that. It used to be before we would all share this big calendar in our office, and an, an administrative person would have to look for a free availability, then is that agent licensed in that particular state? Do they have that particular company that's good in that state? And then line all that up and then finally tell the prospect, okay, I've got you Thursday at 4 p.m. Wait a minute, that's central time? Let me back that out. Okay, so that's 3 p.m. your time, can you do that? All that's now eliminated because we use a calendar program. I wish I knew that five years ago, but it saves us so much more time so that during an AEP like coming up right now, we can be 10 times as efficient with getting that person off the phone, they know where they're going. We start them in our follow-up process that I'll share with you in just a minute. And by doing that, getting off the phone, we can address way more people. It was two years ago that we were kind of floundering with this success, trying to get a handle on it. And this sounds so weird, but it's true. We had 700 voicemails we could not get to two AEPs ago. We tried, we tried. And every time we would get down, the numbers would just go back up again. So we tried to create more automation for them so they could go through a funnel, sift through, and we could help the people that we could help. It was a triage situation. And that's why we had to hire more people. The, the choice was either 
a whole bunch of people get angry and they put online reviews that you can't help them, you'll never call them back, you don't do what you say you're going to do, or you bring people on. And that little nugget of create content online, you'll hear me repeat it over and over again, is the single biggest failure that most agents just don't do for whatever reason. If you've got the knowledge, if you care about people, let people know about that. You don't have to be a secret agent by just winging it with a brand new prospect who does not know you. A couple other tips here. Don't work hard, work smart. So stop resisting technology that can help you work more efficiently. Stop resisting the technology. I have agents tell me all the time, I don't do technology. That's just something I don't do. I don't do technology. Well, it's about time you do. I had so many phone calls during COVID that said, hey, you're that sell Medicare by phone guy, right? Yes. Well, guess what? Our agency shut down. We can't go anywhere. We're in lockdown. What am I going to do? That's a really poor time to increase your telephonic skills and be able to influence people over the phone. It is the wave of the future. Whether you want to do it that way or not, again, totally up to you. All I know is what it, what's been my journey and why it's been so successful because we're able to scale that way. So my other advice would be stop doing things the same old way because that's just how everyone has always done it. Listen, in the first days of A.L. Williams going door to door, business to business, doing one policy at a time, we all as insurance agents in the industry made a very good living doing that. There's no doubt about it. But if you want to scale your business so that your life can impact more people than you ever thought possible, I can't tell you what a feeling that is to be able to give more than you even earned in a prior career. And the only way to get there is by staying abreast of what's happening in the industry and using things that are on the cutting edge, not the way that we've done our industry for 60 years. Create content for the love of Pete's sake. Make videos. If they're horrible and they stink, who cares? Putting something out there that's good will always be putting out something out there that is going to be perfect, but it never gets published. If they're all screwed up, guess what? When you become an online magician five years from now and everything is just whiz bang perfection, go back and delete the first stuff. One thing that I learned about some of the platforms online, you can create a piece of content that will forever be there. Someone happens to search for that, they're likely to find your piece of content as opposed to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and the other things that are out there where it's a fleeting moment in time. They're scrolling through. The algorithm, first of all, won't help you at all unless you're paying for it. And even then, it's interruption marketing, which is half good at best. The better thing is, again, if they're in the market for something, they're searching for someone, and they find your content. And the weird thing about it is we hear this every day. I started watching one of your videos and then I just got to watching another and another and another. Let me just tell you some stats. This is not to brag. I just was, I wanted to see this morning, like, where did we come from? As of today, we have 4,122,363 views on that one YouTube channel. That's the one for the clients, not for agents. In the last 28 days, 3,070 hours were watched around the clock. That's 184,000 minutes of content consumed 102 hours watched every single day of the month while I'm at home sleeping. And so if you're, and again, as far as making it easy in the client process, I'll show you right here. When they're coming into your funnel, if you will make it as easy as possible for that person to determine what they're looking for, it will make your life a heck of a lot simpler. We developed a system where if a voicemail comes in, and yes, is it the best practice? Absolutely not. It's something that I tried and it got us through an AAP and now it really, really helps us. The voicemail comes in, we send it to Google Voice. Google Voice is used with, um, oh, what's that program called? Zapier. It zaps it to a location, the voicemail that is, based on what the person pushed on the phone. If you're brand new to us, push this. If you're an existing client, push that. And so it goes into two different places for our internal staff to watch it. Since it's Google, it goes to a Google Sheet. This is all free, by the way, except for Zapier. A Google Sheet is a live, all the time, updated in real time spreadsheet that just populates one after another, after another, after another. So our voicemails, like during AEP, will just populate on the screen. And we have three monitors in most of our desks in our office. So we have one all the time live showing, and I just continue to hit these buttons, showing 
that we have new clients that need help, we prioritize those. And then it'll ask on the voicemail for detailed information so we can help them immediately. For the people who are asking for our help to write their insurance, we ask questions that you could not ask if you had no trust and authority with those people. You just, you just can't. Like, when's your date of birth? Are you a smoker or a non-smoker? Uh, when did you start Medicare Part B or when will you start it? But by knowing those things, we can again prioritize the people that we can call back in real time. And I know this might seem weird that, you know, why would I want to screen people to that degree? But I'm telling you, if you listen to what I'm saying about putting content out there and people are starting to blow up your phones all the time, you have to have a system of sorting these people. And it, it really does work. And again, those tools are free. So when you're thinking about what content to put out there, I would ask yourself, what is the client thinking about? They're deciding to go on Medicare, or maybe they've just received a, a rate increase on their Medicare supplement. What are they thinking about, and how can I get into that conversation in their head? So what are their concerns? What questions are they asking? Who are they looking for? And then be that person. Work it backwards. Answer that question. No matter what you do on creating content online, you'll call me a liar because you'll say, look, I tried this for 30 days. I put out 10 videos. I put out 10 articles. I wrote 50 blog posts. And you're right, it won't do a darn thing until about a year in. So let me ask you, if you knew that a year in, you would have all the leads you could possibly handle, and they know you, they like you, they trust you, they want you to do business, and they're begging for a space on your limited calendar, and that will continue if you continue doing that to the point that you sell your agency because you're recognized as having inbound traffic where your leads cost you nothing. They're not just leads, they're people who want to buy from you. If you knew that that was a year out, what would you do now? Would you start creating content? Would you start getting better? Would you start studying the industry? Would you start studying online marketing? Or would you continue to do things we've done 50 years ago? Just direct mail, just telemarketing, when everybody's leaving their residential phones, going to cell phones, do not call list, all the rest of it, or come into the, dig the digital age, which will help you for the rest of your agency. I would argue, do both. Don't stop what you're doing right now. If it's feeding you, great. But on your side hustle, and I usually do this uh, AEP last year, we would work in the office as hard as we could, nine to five. Five to six, I would shoot a video. From six to 10, I would edit the video. At 11 o'clock, I would make that video go live every day for days and days and days and days during AP. Was it exhausting? Yes, but I also, now there's so much to learn about digital marketing, but what I learned at that time was I rode the wave of everyone searching for Medicare stuff. Because if you look at Google search, that's what people were searching for during AEP. So I could either take advantage of it or I could sit on the sidelines if someone else had the time to do that. Well, I don't have the time, I'm running an agency, what do I do? I do it in the free time instead of watching Netflix, instead of watching sports. That's what I focused on is creating content so that one day it would pay off. It really did. Um, so the last part, some examples of assets that I've created that we use on a daily basis. And I just want to give you some ideas of what you could use. You don't have to have the best website. Probably none of these websites come up in a, in a rank. It doesn't matter. I'm directing the eyeballs to specifically go to a website based on them reaching out for any kind of information. But by doing so, I've learned that if they watch what I've created, and again, it's not perfect, you'll see that. But if they can get to know me and I can have a 20 minute explanation of one particular plan that they're interested in. We're talking about, in this case, plan N. And I can have all the graphics on there, I can do a PowerPoint, I can show the trend lines, I can show the carriers, I can show what Nehu's saying, I can show uh, Macra, everything about it. And I could do it one time. And I made a, a website for that called planinmedicare.org. Wow, it's not a big deal. But what it does do is it frees up 20 minutes times 17 people every day over and over and over again. They don't have to give the presentation, the people in my office. That came from just sheer exhaustion of saying, let me explain to you what plan G is or plan F or plan N. But instead, I made it where they could go there and listen and learn for themselves. And again, stop it and go back. What most people don't realize is if you're getting an explanation to somebody on the phone, sometimes they'll say they get it just to get you off the phone. 
but they don't really get it. And they don't want to sound dumb by asking you that question over and over again. So if you give them the information that they can go back and watch it again, it really will help. Another couple I'll share with you. Howtostartmedicare.com. Nothing fancy. Howtostartmedicare.com. Somebody says, look, I, I need the form. I'm leaving an employer plan. Uh, we got you covered. Just go to howtostartmedicare.com. Wow, that's your site? Yes, it is. Again, credibility. All it does is points to an internal page on my existing website. No big deal. Domain costs $9. So be creative with the domain and send them to an asset that you're doing something over and over again. Uh, one we used before, plangisbetter.com. That thing got hundreds of thousands of views from people when we were arguing that Plan G is better than Plan F. Plangisbetter.com. And on there, we could show the trend line, show the guarantee issue trend, show what's happening. AmericanDentalCoverage.com. Big no-brainer, but if you want to know about dental, I could either explain it to you for 20 minutes or I could onboard somebody else and have you watch a video where I've done it right one time. Startpartd.com, and I'll wrap up with this. So many FMOs out there, they're great. They have this technology where they give you a replicated website. On that replicated website, it's approved by CMS as direct to consumer, no scope of appointment is needed, and we've enjoyed this with senior market sales for years now. It's amazing technology. The problem is you're turning a senior loose on an application. And many carriers have tried that direct to consumer approach before and it just failed. All your applications are not in good order. How do we fix that? On a website called startpartd.com, again, nothing incredible there, I've got a video and a checklist and then a hyperlink to that very long replicated website that's approved by CMS. Before they get over there though, I want to brief them on what to expect. So last year we did around 700 enrollments on Part D just from startpartd.com. And guess what my internal people did not have to do? A scope, look up the drugs, explain the carriers, the star ratings, all the things about Medicare because it's already done on a CMS approved replicated website. But I would encourage you to put something before that. Just you talking to the people for real and say what you're gonna find when you go to that website. It changed everything for us. Lastly, with just a minute left, why is it important to have millions of dollars? It's not, not at all. The reason I like it is there's a scripture in the Bible, it's, it's James 2, and it says, faith without works is dead. Um, I was born in a Christian family, went to a Christian school, so these things are just like etched in there somewhere. But just think about this passage, I'll leave this with you. What good is it, my brothers, if someone who says that they have faith but they do not have works, can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed or lacking food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, my brother, be warmed and filled, we'll pray for you. Without giving them the things that are needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. We need to do more doing than just talking. We had an opportunity recently to help the, the people, uh, the Christians in Afghanistan. We could not have done that if we'd not stepped out in faith ourselves. I'm just telling you, the giving part of it will reap reward, rewards for you and your family for generations to come. But you can never do that if you don't think that this business is not just about you, it's about people that you can help. So anyway, thank you for taking the time and we'll see you around this week. Thanks y'all. Thank you.